welcome to the Mellow Boys, our returning guest, of course, Dream Theater's singer, James One Lally. of our favorite Canucks. Yes. Yes. Fellow Canucks. Absolutely. Hey. How are you guys? Great. Let me, let me just start by saying congratulations on this solo album. I mean, I think this is your tea for the tiller, man. This is a, this is a classic, strong album. Wow. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I have to tell you, you know what, the, the reviews and the reaction, the reviews have been overwhelming and the fans, the, the way that they're, uh, you know, talking about this. I mean, Paul and I and the rest of the guys couldn't be, we couldn't be happier. I mean, it, it's, it's any artist's, uh, you know, biggest reward to have this kind of reaction. Yeah, for sure. I should I say, mean, you know, you know we'll, hold on, Al, we should, we should plug it. We should plug yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. It's coming out May 20th. Beautiful Shades of Grey on Inside Out Music. So it's coming out, you know, this this probably will come out tomorrow, but the album will be released in two days from now. It will be on Friday. Yeah, so uh, pretty psyched. Everyone's, uh, yeah. And uh, we just released like the, uh, the, the the third single on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, so that's out there right now with the uh, with the video to accompany it as well. And um, yeah, so, hey, it's, uh, it, it's, been, it's been great. You know, I'm hoping that I can um, take this, this thing, this incredible lineup out next May. I'm already talking, promoters are already ringing my bell. And um, <laughs> so they're, uh, we're talking about trying to get out and do some live shows uh, May of 23. So, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, live their lives today in black and white. And I always thought life was gray, is different shades of gray. And uh, that was makes life <laughs> interesting. So, so what's the significance of the title? The significance of the title is the human condition. So um, a lot of my lyrics are dealing with, um, you know, um, what it means to, to, to grow up as a, to exist and to operate as a human being. And I've always said, you know, um, we're a fascinating uh, entity, you know, uh, the construction of us, the complexity of us. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful creation. But at the same time, why I brought in a beautiful shade of gray is because there's always seems to be a certain level um, of sadness that we always carry around with us, you know, and, and whether it's because we know that um, our existence is, um, you know, it's, it's brevity, right? It is. It's very, very brief. And to know that we, we don't know what happens when um, the lights go out, um, it, it's, it's something that we, we contend with. And, and everyone on this planet thinks about it from time to time. And so I wanted to talk about that, you know, the, the ups and downs, the challenges, the victories, uh, you know, and um, the tribulations and all that. So I thought, you know, I'm reading through my lyrics and all my lyrics are dealing with, with, with you know, uh, relationships, uh, uh, growth, um, mental stability, uh, you know, emotional spectrums. And I, I just thought, you know, th- I, I woke, I kept thinking about it for days. So I'd read through my lyrics and then one day, believe it or not, as I was waking up, that phrase came into my head, beautiful shade of gray. And I went, oh, my God, that's perfect. That sums up exactly what I was trying to express throughout all my lyrics. Yeah. What, what, you know, the music, you know, first of all, I'm going to say what Alan just said. I'm going to reiterate it. It's a fabulous album. It's, it feels so organic. Tell us about the musical direction for the people out there who have, <clears throat> you know, who don't know it yet, right? Well, so when uh, Paul and I had our initial meeting, to discuss the kind of album that we wanted to create, I was, you know, very, very sure of my direction. So I said, you know, Paul, I want to create an acoustically based album, very organic sounding. I said, let's just think Zeppelin all the way. You know, I said, they're timeless. They're one of the most phenomenal bands that have ever graced this planet. And I said, and a lot of it had to do with this. That you, you, it felt real. It felt as if you were sitting in a, uh, someone's garage listening yeah. to this incredible musical entity and I said I want to capture that magic I want to capture that magic in the writing 
And I want to capture that man magic sonically. So I said, this is, this is what we need to do. And um, I said, you know, uh, Paul was like all about it. He's like, oh, my God. So initially what, is, what started out, it was like, I want to do an album. It's going to be acoustic guitar and vocals. And then we had written about two songs and we were really excited. And I said, hang on, Paul. So I had a conversation with him. I said, ah, as amazing as this is, I think we're going to be overstaying our welcome. I said, you can only sit around a camp fire so long unless somebody strum the guitar <laughs> and somebody sing i said there need, right. needs to be a little more depth to it and i said we need a full ensemble and that's how we brought in uh you know what became the rest of the guys marco christian and my son chance um and you know at that point too it just it just gave us a wider palette musical palette to work with and um you know i mean obviously the song ideas and all that were always coming from paul and i and we were collaborating and then um you know when we brought chance in he, he started getting involved too with the arrangements and he recorded all my vocals and at my i have a studio in the basement and uh, at my house and and so he was you know not to mention he was doing all the, the drumming and that so um we knew that you know no matter what we we wanted to really pay homage to the 70s but it still had to be contemporary you know, otherwise you're just going to lose your audience. I mean, you know, unless you're, you're just going to play to that demographic, right. Which is unrealistic. So, yeah. So, th so that was, you know, that was what was our, our um, foundation, so to speak. And then we just built it from there. We, we, we Led built Zeppelin the house. Three. So Led Zeppelin three. That's yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. Classic. It, but, but, you know, so, so, so doing that, doing that it, it enabled us to you know be focused and and just create and we and, and here's the other beauty of it is that we took our time you know it was like hey, what else are you going to do today well i don't know I'm go for another walk okay <laughs> yeah. and then sit down and keep writing <laughs> would you, <laughs> you know, hey, let me let me tell you guys uh, we we already have ideas going on for the next one so you know it's wow. it's it's amazing you know like paul's like Hey, I got this. And I'm like, I got this. I got this. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. So, Jim, <laughs> like, just, yeah. just before continuing, can you just recenter ahead that move your camera a little over? Can yeah, you yeah, yeah, more yeah. More out of Center frame? yourself a little just more because you're, you're falling off a camera there. Yeah. Oh, that's better. I'm, yeah. always, oh. In, I'm always in the center. There you go. <laughs> wow. Okay. Actually, you know what? Since we're perfect. at it, can you bring it down? <laughs> Bring it down a little bit so you're complete there. Oh, there he is. We want to make you look good here. Okay, go so, ahead. You guys I got a are question. making me work for this. You guys are <laughs> so, making look, me work. I uh, I love Eden's Curse. Been a huge fan. Uh, Symphony of Sin from 19, 2013. I still listen to that. I still think that's an amazing album. So, you know, there was rumors that he was going to get Eden's Curse back together. And then Nikolai went and joined Sirius Black. So, a, I want to know how you, you know, how you met up with Paul and went about writing this material. And B, are you the cause that Ian's curse is no longer formed? <laughs> yeah, I break up bands. This is what I do yes. on my on, on my time off is I I create uh, havoc for bands and division. <laughs> no, uh, no. So um, so what happened was in 2011, uh, Paul contacted my management and. Um, or actually their label, Eden's Curse label, contacted my management. And because uh, they suggested uh, they had this song called No Holy Man. And they said, um, Paul, Paul said, well, my favorite singer, believe it or not, you can ask him in the world, <laughs> all this is James Labrie, but there's no way he's going to sing on our album. And the label said, how do you know that? Like, you know, like it doesn't hurt to ask. And so they got in touch with my management, my ma uh, manager, called me and said there's this guy who wants to talk to Paul Logan he's from a band Eden's Curse and I said I said that slightly rings a bell I said but I, I can't really place them and uh so I sat down and I talked to uh Paul and I Michael at the time was their singer Michael Eden right isn't that yeah, his right. name yeah right. and uh, so we had a lengthy discussion they said we have this song called No Holy Man and they said um we would love for you to guest on it and sing like you'll sing half of it and michael will sing the other half and you'll interplay with one another i said okay that's fine i said let me hear the song for i always say that 
whatever artist asked me, I, I got to hear the song before I commit. And I heard the song. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> this is a cool tune. I really like it. And, and a great sounding band. And so I went in, I recorded the, that song. And, um, and then I, I got on the phone with, uh, I actually emailed Paul and I said, um, who's writing this stuff? And he says, oh, I'm, I'm the main composer. And I was like, holy shit. I said, this is freaking great stuff, man. I said, uh, it's, it, gives, it gives a classical kind of nod and, um, to that era. And he goes, oh, that's really cool, man. I, ah, God, Jesus, I heard. And he starts rambling off all these bands he's into. Zeppelin as well. And so we kind of stayed in touch. Paul and I stayed in touch. And we kept saying, we got to find a window of opportunity and write something together. So um, let's fast forward to 2020, February 23rd, our last show on the Distance Over Time tour. Uh, we didn't know that at the time uh, in Glasgow. And uh, February 24th, I'm walking through the, I'm sitting at Starbucks in the Glasgow airport and Paul Logue walks by and says, James. And I look over and go, what? <laughs> and he was at the show last night. I said, why didn't you email me? And he goes, I did. I said, oh, shit, you got my old information. I said, that's my fault. So I gave him my new information. We sat down. He goes, uh, are you hearing rumblings about what's going on around the world here? This freaking virus. I said, yep. And he says, uh, let me ask you. If this happens, what are you thinking? And I said, I think that you and I should write an album. And he goes, that's what I was hoping. And we did. <laughs> yep. All right. So you yep. guys, then, then you choose Ramble On as the cover. Yeah. And oh yeah, okay, yeah. you're a big nope. Led Zeppelin fan. But I mean, right. why ramble on and not something else? No trip well, one of my Yeah, I, I, it's one of my favorite songs from them, believe it or not. But here's my my original choice was that's the way that's the way that's the way it had to be. Right? And and you know, that's an amazing song as well. And Paul said, you know, that's a great song. He says, I remember reading an interview with you and you said one of your favorite songs was Ramble On. I go, it is. He goes, why are we doing that? We could freaking knock that out of the park. Yeah. And I said, okay, no argument here. <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm. Let's just do it. And that's how that came about. Right. And it just yeah. fits so well on the album. I yeah, mean, you know, and again, you hear acoustic album, you figure, okay, a few <clears> songs <throat> have the acoustic guitar at the beginning, but this is this is right. a truly acoustic album. And I, I just love like a give and take, you know, that interplay between the piano and the acoustic mm -hmm. guitar at the beginning. There's something yeah. you said when you strip away the distortion pedals, you know, just the pure motion and the parameters yep. that you have on acoustic guitar. Well, this is the thing, you know, and, the, and, and there's another thing. It's like Paul played beautifully. He did the six string, 12 string and bass, acoustic bass guitar on this. So he, he's he's so talented. What, what a freaking talent. He, he's just a wonderful, wonderful musician and human being to boot. And uh, here, we'll get more center for you guys. Cause, All right. Anyways, so. Because um, <laughs> we're very yeah. anal about the center thing. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're all about the center. I, uh, I haven't noticed. I haven't noticed. But uh, so, so then that puts us to the next one. I knew that the only man that should be playing the solo should be Markle. You know, because to me, when you're playing acoustic and, you're, and all your solos are acoustic, well, almost all the solos on the album are acoustic. Um, that separates the men from the boys because you're naked, man. You're out there. You, you make a little blip, blop, bloop. You, there's no room for error or, uh, you know, uh, compromise. So he, he did it. He did it. You know, I mean, Marco is a real gem. He's just a, such a unique, he has such command of his, of his respective instrument. He's, he's, he's phenomenally talented and a very humble and beautiful human being. Like, I mean, he's just like everybody in this band is Christian, you know, or we call chrism, um, you know, the keyboard player, just, just a sensational human being and, and such a great talent and, and very musical. Everybody in this band is very musical. And that's what, you know, they were integral. Yes. Paul and I were writing this stuff, but they were integral to even bring it up to another, you know, like Marco expressing himself, Christian bringing in all that atmospheric, sonic, uh, soundscape, uh, painting, emotion, piano. I mean, that brought it more depth, you know, and then Chance with his drumming and, and, and uh, his, his whole 
take on on the arrangements and and stuff like that and he recorded all my vocals and uh you know uh it's and he do you ever, very, do you ever get very, any dad moments dad but dad well <laughs> he, this is dad, hey, come on dad this is i mean i don't know if you know my son's band called falsette right uh, yeah, and, yeah, um, I've heard of him, yeah yeah so i mean you know here's the things it, it was so funny the first day that we started recording and, and he came in and he goes hey dad i just want to let you know <clears throat> You're gonna leave James Brie at the door, right? And and I said, well, what do you mean by that? He says, man, I I, I don't want to deal with James. I just want to deal with you, the musician. But no ego, no nothing like that. I thought, I don't I don't walk into any studio or James. I don't walk into any studio chance with an eagle because that's self destructive. I said that's just not who I am. Um, and he goes, okay, good. And I said, hey man, I'm your father. You you didn't know that about me. And he goes, well, no, I just don't, I, I've never worked with you in the, in the studio in, in this capacity. And I said, there you go. I said, okay, we got that out of the way. And then boom. But you know, here's the thing is that, that chance was always brutally honest with me. Like there'd be some things that I do and I go, Hey, I kind of like that. What I, what I did there. And he goes, really? I died. Uh, no, I think, I think you should maybe tap into what you did on glass prison. Or I think you should tap into what you, you did. That's on a ministry, good point. Or I think family, family you know, could be more honest than, than, yes, the, than the yes, yes people. And, like my son's brutally honest with me. So. Yeah. And you know what? And they should be right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's mm -hmm. phony, right? And like, what, what are we doing here? Oh, you're just, you know, appeasing me, you know, come on. There's like enough this. phony, yeah. Yeah. phony crap in the world to begin with. But um, you know, um, yeah, so it was a real, tr a real treat to work with them. We had a, you know, like at I got to be honest, guys. Like at times, I would, I would say, hang on a second. You know, I just finished singing a, a chorus or something like that. And I'd say, hang on a second. I said, holy shit, man! Those last few lines that I just sang, I said I couldn't help but thinking, I'm, I got my son sitting in the studio here recording my vocals. I said the same guy that I was holding in my arms as a baby, twenty three yeah. years ago. It, yeah. it just felt surreal at times, you know what I, I mean? And I was like, I never, you know, if anybody said, do you realize like fast forward, you're going to be working with your son in the studio and you're going to be recording your vocals. Yeah, right. Right. I mean, we don't see that, right? We don't see, which is, that's a great thing, right? We don't, I don't want to know my future. But it, it was just uh, at times, it's kind of like, well, you know, I'm just sitting down and, and then sitting down and listening to the vocal when I was done the track and then saying, okay, what do you think? And, you know, and Chance go, well, you know, Right there, he, and it was very, very few. Like it, it might have been like one or two moments. He'd go, "Well, why don't you do a different inflection there, Dad, or something like that?" I don't know. That's what I'm here, and I'm hearing this. Or Dad even go into like a false settle or something like that. And I go, "False settle there? Well, give it a whirl. Like why not? It, it, let, let's experiment." And, and you know, some of the times it would work. It was like, "Holy shit, that's perfect." You know. So anyway, it, it was a real treat, and it was um, you know, you know, you can never stop. It's funny, but, uh, you know, and every musician will say this is that's the beauty of anything that you're ever um, involved in musically. There's always learning. You, you continuously learn from it. You know, you always think, oh, I've been doing this for 30 years. I know all that there is to know. No, you don't. You don't. Because each experience is different. It, you, you grow with each musician you work with. I mean, I, I never work with anybody like Paul and I've worked with so many people, you know, and, and he's just a phenomenally talented and musical uh, person. And, and just the way that he thinks about things, he's so meticulous, you know, he's so methodical. He's like, he, he thinks um, globally about what it is, the sound and, Oh, well, maybe this should be open chord, you know, open tuning and, and uh, this, this chord will progress. And he come back and I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm experimenting and I'm like, holy shit, that's a great way to, you know, to get to our goal. And, and, he, and he was opening up me to, you know, like to think, well, wait a minute, if you're going that route, then maybe I can approach my singing in a similar style or my melodies that I'm creating on this album, you know, and it's just a. You're always learning. It's always a learning curve. Life sure. is learning. Yeah. yeah. We all have different yeah. sets of ears, right? And that's what, you know, yeah. everybody can add something. But it just, I mean, you just brought up so many points for me. I mean, Mark was playing Hit Me Like a Brick, that solo just on that song alone. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Sure. Uh, sure. Am I right? Yeah. You know, that's got uh, a little bit of a Michael Sweet solo album feel to me. And then 
then you're talking about the falsetto. Michael those Sweet, notes, wow. those high notes yeah. that you sing at the end of that song just blew my mind, you know? So wait a second, then he's yeah. got that sort of queen vibe going with the sort of the, uh, the acapella stuff at the beginning of... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Conscious right? Calling, yeah. Con- no, 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 calling. no, Conscious Calling. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Conscience Calling. Remind me of Time yeah. Cannon from Triumph a bit for yeah, some reason. Know, I don't know why. That, time, time, that, time, that time, whole time. melody of uh, the Conscience Calling melody, I was out in my garage... You know how we all go in our garage and go, holy shit, I think we need to purge, <laughs> you know? So my wife and I are out there going, get rid of this, get rid of that, get rid of this. Get rid of and um, all of a sudden, you know, I was joking with her about something haunting. And I'm like this. And she goes, oh, my God, give me a break. And then I went, da, 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 da. And I went, whoa, hang on a second. I think I got some honey. And I just <laughs> laid it down on the phone and I threw it down on the phone. And then in further conversation with Paul, I sent it to Paul and he's like, holy shit, this is freaking awesome. What do you think? And I said, acapella. And he goes, no kidding. And, and I said, I got it. I said, I wanted to have an, a vocal orchestration. And that's why I called in Henning Pauly. And you guys remember the uh, project I did called Frameship back mm-hmm. in 2004. Yeah, yeah, I did this, and and Henning Paul, he, he wrote it, and he produced it, brought me in to sing on it, and there was all these moments of like acapella, and we did this one section, and there was something like I don't know ninety vocals that I did, uh, tracks, ninety tracks, and so I call up Henning, and I say, Henning, I got this melody, I've got these words, can you do the vocal orchestration for me? I want to do that big choir thing again and i'm going to sing all the parts and blah 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 and he goes oh my god yeah send it to me so he comes back and i'm not kidding you in three days he turned it around and he goes well here's what i got with with your melody and your words and i'm like oh shit that's it you freaking nailed it thank you he's such he's such a talent and then uh, i went in with chance and we uh recorded 70 tracks for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm yeah. it is. Yeah, man. <laughs> James, yeah. in, in so. the few minutes that we have left, just uh, two more, uh, maybe two dream quick, quick dream theater questions. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a re- there's a, a release or a re-release of the bootleg of Number of the Beast coming out on the streaming service. Is mm-hmm. that something you were involved in or not? On the streaming service? You mean on the Lost Not Forgotten archives? I, I think... What I read was the number of the beast that night when you guys did the number of the beast recorded, yeah, 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 yeah. it's coming out officially yeah. on the streaming services. Yeah. Okay. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know what guys, we got so much shit going on. I can't keep up. Holy <laughs> smoke. Folks. I mean, you know, I, I, I I'm, I'm going to assume that that's part of the lost, not forgotten archives because we have this, like where we're really releasing live shows from mm. years ago, you know, we got some stuff that's going to come out soon with uh, like Derek Sherinian, his last show that he played with us. We got wow. like, there's many, many titles that we have in the works that are just, you know, um, going to be coming out. So that's, I'm going to assume it's probably something that got by me. I can just go on my site and like any fan and look to see if that's a title that's coming. I'm pretty sure it's official. And because I remember us recording that, um, that was done in, wasn't that done in France? It was, I think, it, I don't know. It, it was 2004. Or maybe I'm wrong about the date. I don't remember, but all I know is that I read was it? that. It, oh. Well, maybe I'm completely wrong. I think I it was know. in, I thought it was 98. Maybe you're right. Uh, maybe you you're know right. what? You maybe know? You're I don't know. Let us go on the website and Am take I a look. Right? That, that's well prepared, Jim. You're well prepared. <laughs> Why are you Am I just not well prepared? Listen, guys, listen, you can't ask me any questions about Dream Theater. I don't really know who they are. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. How about that well, Grammy? Yeah. How about that yeah. Grammy? I, that was my second, my last question about Dream Theater. The okay. Grammy, you know, the, the, okay. it, that's big news. You know about this, right? It's not a Juno. <laughs> I heard. I heard. Yeah. No, you know what, guys? Like, that that was that was uh ridiculous. I mean, we uh you know, I guess third time's a charm, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we were up against uh, some formidable uh, uh, guests there. There's no doubt about it. So, you know, it could have been anyone's. And um, the fact that we won is just a, an amazing, amazing uh, feeling. You know, we're all just absolutely thrilled. And, um, 
another feather in our cap, so to speak. But geez, yeah, we didn't, we, we never, we, we really never did imagine. I mean, you know, when we were sitting down on the, riding uh, in the tour bus last week or whatever, and we were talking about him, we're like, you know, like, just think about what, what we got here, guys. I mean, did Rush win one? Did Genesis win one? Did Yes win one? Ooh. You know, and you, and you start going around and you start thinking about all these bands deservedly should have one, should have several. Jeff Rotal won one, by the way. We know. Did he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So there you go. So, okay. Well, he's, he's progressive somewhat, you know, for sure he is. You know, another brick in the wall? Or not another brick in the wall. What was it called? Uh, Aquilon. Thick as a brick. Aquilon. Yeah, thick as a brick. Yeah. Hey, James, last but, time. Uh, Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. But the last time we interviewed you, we we broke the internet when you you know you told us that you were asked to join Iron Maiden. So I just want to know if there's any more revelations you want to throw on us before wrapping it up. Like uh, I don't know if you were subpoenaed to to go to the Amber Heard, uh, Johnny Depp, uh, <laughs> anything like that. You know. First, first of all, I'm not going to waste my time going to something like that. Oh my God, please! The the Aren't there more important are things in this world? You know, hey, you know, aren't the more important things in this world and the fact that the people are struggling to make ends meet, you know, and then you're talking about two people. I want fifty million dollars from you. And I'm like, oh, come on. You know, I mean, hey, listen, you know, I, I understand um, where they're both coming from. And, and you know, are we ever going to know the truth? I don't think so. You know, but be, beyond that, no, I mean, you know, I don't know. There's there's nothing to reveal that would be uh, noteworthy <laughs> and uh, no man, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just going to keep touring out here with dream theater. And then, uh, like I said, I'm hoping that we can put uh, this, this uh, ensemble together next May and do some, uh, do some shows with this, uh, this solo thing. So yeah. we're looking forward to it. So you're saying at the, let's say Q3, Q4, you're expecting a solo some solo shows is that it in the next few months or when are you expecting to do such solo tour or so shows i'm saying that we're right now we're talking about the possibility of doing shows in may of 23 oh okay. may 23 about a year okay from okay. Now. okay yeah okay. i, I because, thought you were saying I mean, yeah oh god no mm. you have dream theater no. Theater shows yeah the, no no because i'm out till june 1st with uh Okay. With this band, I forget what's her name. I don't know. But it, it, the the thing is, is that I have to be, you know, like, let's face it, Dream Theater is going to be out at least until, you know, I, I don't know, we could be out a year from now. But what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to, so I'm finding out from management if there's going to be a window of opportunity in May, next May, okay. so that I can get out and do, you know, two, three weeks maybe in Europe and then find out when the next window is and then maybe do three weeks in North America, you know, at select uh, cities and places and, and that's it, you know, but it would be um, what they're trying to schedule for me in Europe right now uh, for next May is they want to put me in um, cathedrals and churches oh, and, wow. um, and, and uh, small castles and it would be, I, I told them I want to keep it very intimate. So I said, you know, 500, 500 people, maybe a thousand at the most. And so that it's, it's just going to be a real exclusive, you know, experience, experience for, for the fans, you know, and, and to maintain and, or retain that, that, uh, that acoustic notion that we've been doing since the beginning of this uh, this album so you know it'll just bring more light to that fact and it'll just make it a, a really really uh you know intense evening for sure a musical uh, treat uh, on that yeah. note everyone go pick up the new solo album. i think it's probably the best solo work that you've done in your career you know? well well yeah. you know what i can't i can't thank you enough for saying that wow man Whew. congratulations I, I mean uh i Thank you so much. You know what? That means the world to me. Thank you. I really do. Merci beaucoup. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, hey, guys, thank you. And uh, I really appreciate your show. And I appreciate all you guys do. You know, you guys have been extremely supportive. And, uh, listen, that doesn't go unnoticed. And I'm very sincere when I James, say James, thank yeah. you so much. Thanks again. Have a Always great a work. pleasure, James. 
Okay, guys. Awesome talking to you guys. Great interview. And take care and look forward to talking to you again.